structure and configuration. The overview of this will be covering the network topologies, the network types, optimization, the network ports and protocols. We'll also be covering routing and switching. Network topologies. Network topology is how the network is organized. They could be either in a straight line, connected to many devices, and so on and so forth. We'll be covering each of those. We have bus, ring, mesh, star, and tree topology. Also, it's very important whenever it comes to the cloud that many LANs make a WAN. Many LANs make a WAN. That's very important. If you have a local area network, well, to make it a wide area network, you might have cities connected. And whenever cities are connected, that makes a WAN. Your space, you, your LAN might be in this building, building A. But whenever you connect building A to your site in Chesapeake or your site in Chicago or New York and you put them together, that creates a WAN. It's very important to remember. Bus. On a bus topology, all the computers are connected in a straight line. Most of the time this is used with a BNC connector. Not really used a whole lot anymore. The main reason why it's not used so much anymore is because if there is a break anywhere in the line, the network goes down. On each end of the network, uh, each end of the bus cable, there has to be a terminator to absorb all the data so that way it's not bounced back. The next topology is ring. This is where each computer has two connections and that it's connected in a continuous circle. The purpose behind this is to get everything flowing so that way it's easier and the network's a little bit faster. There's a token that's passed around each one of the, the, the nodes, but if there is a break anywhere in the line, the whole entire network goes down. A downfall of this would be that the server would be on the ring and that whenever information is passed from one computer to the next, it has to go in a complete circle. So if this computer here needs information from this computer, but the ring passes in this direction, well then it would have to wait its whole entire time until it goes from one computer to the next computer. The next topology is mesh. And mesh is where every computer is connected to every computer. The network might not be fully meshed out. However, the purpose behind it is for redundancy. So that way every computer is connected and if one computer goes down, it's able to continue on. The downfall of this is, if you have 20 PCs, well you need 20 NICs in the back of your computer so that way you can connect to every other computer in there. That's the main reason why a lot of PCs are not fully meshed. The next topology is STAR, and STAR is probably the most common topology. Most homes have a STAR network. A STAR, it would just have a center, central node where it would be a hub or a switch, and that central node is where all the information is passed through. If one computer goes down, it is okay because the central hub is able to pass information back and forth. However, if the central hub goes down, all network connectivity stops. The last topology is tree topology. And the purpose behind a tree topology is a hierarchical stru structure. The hierarchical structure allows for everybody to be connected, but also gives a central node for each hub. It's basically like a star connected to a star, connected to a star, connected to a star. That you have the bottom computers that are just giving information to their parent, and then that information is being passed to the next parent. However, if one of the nodes goes down, that whole entire branch goes down. So if the top node goes down, all connectivity stops. However, if one of the two at the bottom goes down, well then all the information below that stops. Next we have network types. In network types we have intranet, internet, and the extranet. Extranet is also called your parameter network because it's the outer reaches of your network. And this is also where your DMZ lies, which we'll talk more in depth later on. Your intranet is a private network and is mainly created by the company and it was maintained by the company so that way they're able to give information to the internal network for quick access. For instance, forums that your company might be using or possibly documentation that needs to be accessed often would be hosted inside your intranet so that way they're able to get quick answers back and forth instead of every time that you need to download a document you got to go find it online and then once you find it you download it if it's offered inside your intranet you're able to go directly to your intranet and it's less load on your outside router the intranet is the cloud and it's not controlled by anybody but it's the web and it is where information is saved a lot of information is saved 
the purpose behind internet is for a collaboration of entities. For instance, Verizon, Comcast, Cox, or any of those other people like Google and Amazon, they're part of the in internet, and they allow for users to be able to exchange data freely and to offer resources. It uses a series of protocols to send information, and it's a combination of many, many LANs and WANs organized together to create a large cloud. Your extranet is the perimeter of your network. This is where most DMZs are hosted. And the purpose behind a DMZ is so that a way it separates the outside users from the inside users. It's the demilitarized zone. The extranet is also a portion of the intranet that is offered out to the public. It's offered out into the cloud. And the purpose behind this is in case a person or an entity needs information that is offered by a bank, well, they might put information on their DMC or extranet so that a way a user or another company can go on to their web page and download what they need. The next slide is network optimization. In network optimization, we have load balancing, bandwidth, latency, compression, and caching. Load balancing is distributing the load so that a way instead of one router being overworked, that is giving information to two routers. You have two routers installed side by side, and each one has a line going out to a different company, say Verizon and Comcast or some other company, and it allows a distribution of load so that way one router isn't getting overworked. Bandwidth, on the other hand, is the amount of speed that you're offering out. For instance, 10 megabits per second. 10 megabits is the amount of bandwidth. 100 megabits per second. 100 megabits is the bandwidth. If you have a garden hose, a garden hose puts out so much water, but if you have a fire hydrant hose, it puts out a lot more water. That's the comparison of bandwidth, a garden hose to a fire hose. Latency. Latency is the amount of time that it takes information to get relayed back and forth. The higher the latency, the worse the network would be. In this example, 1MS, that is the latency. MS stands for milliseconds. And then this is the amount of time that it takes for that packet of information to get from one place to another place. Compression is a similar form of encryption. Compression allows you to take a file and to compress it to a form that is unreadable and that you need a program that can read that file extension to be able to read it. Caching. Caching allows for a storage of frequently accessed data. The purpose behind caching is so that a way your computer doesn't have to go to the internet every time it needs information. For example, you go to Google. Whenever you type in www.google.com and then you hit enter, it goes to the internet and then pulls Google's page back to you. Well, what caching will do is take that page, save it locally on your computer, so that way whenever you type in google.com again, it goes to your direct computer instead of going out to the internet. That way if many, many people are going to Google, they're able to go to their local server, pull the cache, and be able to access what they need without having to go to the internet. The next thing we're going to talk about is network ports and protocols. Here are some common ports. These are common ports that I would strongly recommend learning. FTP, which is port 20 and 21, Telnet, port 23, SSH, 22, SMTP, 25, DNS, 53, DHCP, 67 and 68, TFTP, which is 69, HTTP, 80, POP3, which is 110. Each one of these ports have a specific function. And the purpose behind the port is so that way the network knows what to do with the information. For example, FTP, well, that's file transfer protocol. One port is the transfer files back and forth, and then the other port is the control. Telnet is the access to computer remotely. It's using command prompt. SSH is the exact same. However, SSH is secure. SMTP is with email, that is sending out emails. DNS stands for domain name server, and that, that allows you to be able to translate www.google.com into an IP address. DHCP is used to get an IP address, and TFTP is the same as FTP, but it's for trivial files. HTTP is, allows you to browse the web. POP3, that is receiving emails. Next we have network news transfer protocol, which is 119. Network time protocol, 123. 
Internet Message Access Protocol 143, SNMT 161 and 162, LDAP 389, HTTPS 443, and RDP 3389. NNTP that allows you to get information via your network. NTP allows you to make sure that the time is synced up from servers to workstations. IMAP4 is another way of getting email. The difference between IMAP4 and POP3 is POP3, once you receive email from POP3, it deletes it on the server. Think of what it stands for, post office protocol. Whenever you go to the post office, you receive a letter from them. They don't have the letter anymore. With well, IMAP4, Internet Message Access Protocol, it saves it. You're just accessing the web whenever you use IMAP4. That it saves it on the server, and if you delete it, it deletes it from the server, but it's not saved onto your device, your mobile device. SNMT, that is a network management protocol. A lot of companies turn this off because it gives out too much information for the network, and if hackers are able to get inside of your network, they're able to see inside your network. LDAP, Commonly used with Active Directory. A lot of people don't know, but Active Directory isn't a protocol on its own. It uses LDAP to be able to perform the function. It uses the schema. HTTPS, that is the exact same as web browsing, but that's secure. If you log on to a bank, if you ever look in your address bar, it'll, it'll switch from HTTP to HTTPS, and that means that your web browsing is secure. RDP, that's remote desktop. And that allows you to access a computer from any other computer as if you're logged on to that PC. It is important to remember the port number and the port name. For instance, while I was taking my test, I remember one question that asked me, what port uses UDP? And it didn't give me port names, it gave me port numbers. And if I didn't know that 25 was TCP and had to do with SMTP, I could have gotten this question wrong. Or that... 53 was TCP and UDP, which is DNS, or 67 and 68 is UDP only, but that is DHCP. If I didn't know that, then I would have gotten that question wrong. Next, we're going to cover routing and switching. For routing, we have NAT, PAT, VLAN, and routing tables. NAT stands for Network Address Translation. The purpose behind NAT is to hide your internal network's IP address. Whenever you browse the web behind a NAT server, Instead of your IP address or your name being broadcast to the world, it's going to be that end server, that end router that's going to be broadcast out. So that way the internal network is secure. So that way if hackers are trying to get inside the network, they will only be able to access that outside device and be able to see it versus accessing all the way through and getting to the internal network. PAT is very similar, but it provides many internal devices mapping of a single internal IP address. So that way, if many devices are trying to access the web at the exact same time, it will give them an IP address that isn't really their IP address. It allows you to access the web, and hackers won't know what the internal address is. VLAN. VLAN is very important whenever it comes to the internal network. For example, you have a five-story building, and each story has its own VLAN. The purpose behind that is so that way that story can only access its floor. If floor 1 is VLAN 5, floor 2 VLAN 10, floor 3 VLAN 15, floor 4 VLAN 20, and floor 5 VLAN 25, well then, if you're a part of your VLAN, you can only see your network. Another thing is with wireless, and routers are able to implement a procedure so that way they're a part of their own VLAN. This, would be, this is very important whenever you go to places like Starbucks or Chick-fil-A where they offer free Wi-Fi. If they offer this VLAN and offer a separation of every node, then whenever one phone or one computer connects to the network, it will only be able to access itself. And the person sitting beside you who you do not know won't be able to access your information. Routing tables. Routing tables are stored on the router, and they're basically a table of information that allows the user to be able to access a device or host through a quick means. The purpose behind a routing table is so that way the internal network is able to f know the next hop outside of their network. That if you're going to Comcast or Verizon or to Google 
or some other place, you'll be able to go to that next hop and continue on that you won't have to search out or your packet will not have to search out and to be able to go to the next network. In this module, we covered network topologies, types, optimization, ports and protocol, routing and switching.